Hi, and welcome to another tutorial on one of the greatest Logic Pro X synthesizers. Today we're going to talk about the ES1. A very powerful yet simple to program a synthesizer that is a polyphonic synthesizer. It is great to create pretty much any type of sound from rich pads to inspiring leads to really deep and effective bass patches. Today we're going to concentrate on creating a bass patch using this specific synthesizer. To easily learn how to program the ES1 or any type of synthesizer, let's remember that we can identify some basic modules that are common to any type of synthesis. Usually we have a generator section that allows us to create the basic waveforms. Then we have a modifier section that usually includes filters sometimes other type of effects. And then we have LFOs and envelopes that allow me to change parameters over time, either in a cyclic way, in the case of the LFO, low frequency oscillator, or in a time-based way in the case of an envelope. So let's identify those basic sections in the S1. Here we have the generator section with two oscillators, here we have the filter section as part of our modifier. We have the amplifier. And then we have the LFO and envelopes. So let's learn how to use it and how to program some great patches. The generator section of the ES1 has two oscillators, a main oscillator and a sub oscillator. I can change the balance between the two using this slider. If I move it all the way up, I'm going to hear only the top oscillator. If I move it all the way down, I'm just going to hear the sub oscillator. Here I have inserted an oscilloscope to just take a look at the waveforms that the top oscillator can generate. Here we have a basic triangular wave, a sawtooth, and a square wave. The square wave can be morphed into a, a pulse width modulation wave. So as you can see, I have access to some really good basic geometrically shaped waveform right from the top oscillator. Here I can choose the octave. So let's say I want to create a bass patch, so I'm going to choose a lower octave. Now let's take a look at the sub oscillators. Here I have a few more options. I have a square, a pulse, another type of square, a more random option and also noise. So I have access to some really good option right here. Again, this allows me to balance between the two. Once you find your perfect balance, you can move to the filter section. Here I can choose between four different options in terms of filters. They give you different colors and different slopes. More aggressive ones or less aggressive ones. And then here's my cutoff frequency. And again, those are different type of filter. You also have access to a drive. And of course to my resonance. The key option allows you to change how the filter works depending on the range in which you are playing. If the key slider 
is set to zero, basically the cutoff frequency is not going to change no matter which key you're going to be playing. This has the effect of making the lower notes sound kind of brighter than the higher notes. Vice versa, if you set it to one, to the maximum, the filter actually will follow the pitch that you are playing. This will result in a more even relationship between the cutoff frequency of the filter and the note you are playing. The ADSR via velocity slider allows you to determine how the note velocity will affect the modulation of the filter cutoff frequency. Again, you can choose a range or have a specific setting that's going to be always there. This is going to be up to you depending how you want the velocity to affect the filter. I recommend usually something pretty mild uh, if you don't want the velocity to affect too much the filter. Of course we have a resonance that again allows you to create extra harmonics based on the cutoff frequency. You can hear the, how velocity is going to affect the filter based on these settings. The amplifier section allows you to control the loudness of the patch based on velocity. It means that if I want a patch that is not dynamic sensitive, I'm going to just have it always full with no range. But if I want it fully dynamic sensitive, I'm going to have the full range. The final parameter of the amplifier allows me to select which type of envelope I'm going to use for the amplifier. In general, I recommend using ADSR that gives you a full attack decay sustain and release for the amplifier. You can also choose just attack, gate and release or just gate and release to have a simpler envelope. But as I said, in general, I really like to have the full ADSR option. The glide allows you to glide between two subsequent notes. In order to work, you have to make your patch monophonic. So here under voices, I'm going to just put one, which means now instead of being able to play 16 notes at the same time, I can only play one. This will activate the glide. giving a little bit of a smoother transition between the notes that I play. Now let's take a look at the LFO of the ES1. The low frequency oscillator, remember, is an oscillator that generates waveform below 20 Hz. Those are not heard, but they can be assigned to control different parameters of our synthesizer. Here I have different waves that I can choose from. And here I can choose the parameter that's going to be controlled by the LFO. Here I can choose the speed of the LFO. For example, if I want the LFO to control pitch, I'm going to choose a waveform. In this case, I'm going to choose my square waveform and select the rate at which the oscillator will run. Here, I can choose how much the LFO will control the selected parameter. So based on this square wave is controlling the pitch. And this control the rate. The rate can be set in Hertz or in rhythmic subdivision. Of course, the LFO can control other parameters as well. It can control the width of the pulse width waveform. It can control the mix between the two oscillators. 
can control the cutoff frequency, the amount of resonance, or the volume. So as you can see, it can really add life to your patch. This parameter can also be controlled by the modulation wheel. So if I extend this bracket, now the modulation wheel will allow me to control how much the LFO interacts with the mix. Now I'm raising my modulation wheel and see how now it's controlling the mix. But if I bring down my modulation wheel, it will stop controlling it. So really, really powerful. I'm going to reset my LFO and I'm going to just have it not active so we can concentrate on the envelope. This envelope allows me to again control any of these parameters using an attack or a decay function. This is a very basic envelope. It's not a full ADSR envelope, but nevertheless it can be very interesting and effective in controlling certain parameters. For example, if I want to control the mix between the two oscillator, again, I'm going to bring all the way up my slider here. This means now that this envelope is fully controlling the mix. So let's hear it. If I bring it to the right, I can hear how the mix changes over time. If I bring it to the left, it's going to change after I press the key. Let's try with the cutoff frequency. So this allows me to control a little bit any of these parameters. Let's see it with the pitch. I'm going to apply it to resonance. Of course, I can decide to control it a little bit less. So this is a great way, again, to make your patches more interesting and evolving over time. You can also have velocity controlling how much the envelope controls the parameter that you have selected. So to do so, you would increase this bracket. That means that now velocity will control how much the envelope is going to have an effect on the resonance in this case. Finally, we have the ADSR of the amplifier. This allows me to decide if the patch is going to have a very short and sharp attack or a longer attack. and a short release or a longer release. I also have access to some basic effects, two type of choruses and one ensemble. Once I'm happy with my patch, I simply Go back up here, select Save As, and I'm going to give it the name. And I'm ready to use my patch in any type of production. 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you really take advantage of this great synthesizer, the ES1 in Logic Pro X.